In the spirit of cliches, it's most apt that the first time I'm to cover a French film, it's all about sex, sex, and sex. <laughs> Though rather than being about a pretty young thing's first time, which it still is, mind you, the perspective through which it's told is still a rather unique one. That being, for the most part, vicariously experienced through the eyes of a fat, prepubescent girl. Written and directed by Catherine Briatt and released in 2001, Fat Girl tells the very coming-of-age tale of two sisters, Anaïs and Elena. The latter being the elder, more conventionally appealing and sultry girl of 15, who's already sexually experienced but is saving herself from going all the way, and the former, her fat sister of 12, who claims she wants to lose her virginity as quickly as possible with someone she doesn't give a fuck about. Giggity, giggity, giggity. This stark contrast, not just limited to their physicality and attitude towards sex, foretells the events in a foreshadowed allegory that you won't see coming until it's ultimately too late. Shortly after this intro, another cliché is thrown into the mix through the presence of Fernando, an Italian Lothario law student in his early 20s, on holiday like the girls, who hones in on Elena as if there's a collective competition to alleviate her of her virginity as quickly as fucking possible. Before her coffee even arrives, he makes himself busy tickling her tonsils, all whilst Anaïs watches as she eagerly stuffs a banana split into her pie hole. Her sister's romance, if one can really call it that, is as sickly sweet and faux healthy as Tubby's dessert, as before we know it, Fernando is sneaking into the girl's bedroom Romeo style, armed to the teeth with Shakespearean cookie cutter sonnets and laughable insights regarding the true expression of love and how it should be physically acted upon, all in a bid to get Elena to give up the gash. Sorry, did he actually say gash? Though clearly intrigued of her own accord, Elena ums and ahs as to whether to go through with it, frustrating Fernando no end, or to his bell end, if you will, until the two come to a compromise and, much like the way he entered the room, settles on her back door instead. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Awkward, contrived, and painfully typical this is to watch is made all the more so by the fact we're also seeing it through Anaïs's eyes, who pretends to be asleep during the whole ordeal. Of course, Fernando is a shit who knows full well what he's doing and even admits as such, but with the autonomy of young women a theme of the film, Elena also wishes to explore as well. The age gap, whilst poignant, is almost irrelevant as it is hackneyed, since Elena likely opted for Fernando precisely because she knew he'd break her little heart. With the advice of her fat little sister playing its part too, the cruelest, perhaps even most sinister part of the film is how inevitable it all feels. It's comical and lamentable, precisely because we've all seen it before, even somewhat emblematic of the farcical, doomed romances of Greek tragedies 2,000 years prior. Elena echoes the words of Britney Spears. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. No. She's a fucking horny, hormonal teenage girl. A girl learning the hard way, excuse the pun, regarding the loss of her virginity, whereas her younger, pudgy sister has been getting fucked by life ever since she was old enough to feed herself. Contrasting the two sisters further, Briat has Anaïs play out a fantasy in the swimming pool where she makes fictional lovers out of a wooden pier and metallic ladder. Given her age, it's clearly a good thing this girl isn't seen as a sexual possibility, but it doesn't stop her pining for it and becoming oompa loompa enraged with jealousy by her sister's all-night activities. All of which adds to the serpentine menace the film is driving toward. An interesting proposition the provocative fat girl makes is how our defence mechanisms are rooted in our attitude towards sex itself, if not completely driven by it. With Elena being the stereotypical desired girl, slim, pretty, and somewhat salacious while maintaining her quote-unquote innocence, her beliefs surrounding her virginity are aligned with the typical when it comes to girls of her ilk. She sees her virginity as something sacred, 
sought after by all men because she's blessed with the requisite genetic attributes. In essence, her virginity gives her an illusion of being special, correlative to her so-called purity. Her sister, on the other hand, has never known what it's like to be desired and thus places no significance upon her first time whatsoever. Anais, or so she claims, wants to be treated in a cold, rational manner, devoid of any romantic sentiment because she herself has been treated with the same indifference her whole life. In this way, she gains control by maintaining her stoic attitude. Of course, it's delusional and symptomatic of her adolescence, but when we see her parents and sister controlling her, usually with put-downs regarding her weight, only to quite literally shovel food into her fat mouth when she's upset, we're put into an uncomfortable position not dissimilar to Anais's. A bystander awash with the same lack of control, relinquishing said control when it comes to her first time, except through being totally indifferent to the guy she's with, would presumably grant her a sense of sovereignty her whole life thus far has denied. It's all very well having romantic reveries about our first times, but life, as Anais all too well knows, doesn't give a fuck about your dreams. In reality, a guy will go to the ends of the earth to get into a pretty girl's panties, only to vamoose once the deed is done. Elena, deep down, already knows this to be the case, but having already done everything bar vaginal penetration, giggity giggity. Her resolve has already been weakened by her previous actions, long before Fernando sniffed her out. These days, many would cry CP over some of the content. You fucking pedo! Yeah, run your pedo! Oh, fucking hell, don't do that, no, Patrice. Pedo. As we see Bush, ready to go Italian rods, and some flabby kitty titties, but everything is dealt with as you'd expect from a movie. If it gets under your skin, it's because it's fucking meant to. And well, if that still bothers you, just remember, the film is fucking French. One underappreciated element is how well the film depicts the two sisters, who, despite knowingly looking like anything but, share a relationship that is undoubtedly familial. They bicker, insult and rip on one another, but there's also moments of genuine, heartfelt connection where the uniqueness of their relationship is more than apparent. If I were to nitpick, I could accuse the mother of acting rather stupidly, as she's more than aware of Fernando's presence, yet acts shocked when she discovers he's been dipping his baguette into her daughter's olive oil. Considering she's what the boys would call a bona fide MILF, it stands to reason she would have received similar attention at the same age as her daughter, and yet prefers to play dumb until it can no longer be ignored. Maybe it was a case of denial, believing herself to be just as alluring as she once was, and naturally the only sexually active of the three, or maybe it was just a classic case of parenting de la merde. But given her own lasciviousness, it was a little hard <clears throat> to swallow. The best part of the film, however, is in its knockout, seemingly out of fucking nowhere ending. Once Mama knows what her slut daughter's been up to, she drives them both home along a motorway of oppressive trucks, menacingly depicted through rearview mirrors and the like. The tension and sudden switch of lanes into looming catastrophe is superb, and the wham-bam, thank you madame conclusion will leave you not only shocked, but also shift your entire perspective on everything that led up to it. In the words of Kurt Cobain, hey! nobody dies a virgin. Life fucks everyone. <laughs>